Welcome to the East Side Dave Show without Roy Harder this week. It's the Cyber Series edition with your host, East Side Dave. Oh, God. Robert, thank you so much. No applause? You're the in-studio producer. You're not going to light my ass up today? Sorry, Dave. I got a bunch of roles to play. I'm sorry, buddy. On a, on a goddamn difficult episode that we're just going to, you know, it's going to be a struggle tonight, and you're not going to give me raucous enthusiasm. East you know what, Drew? Dave. Drew, get East ready to Dave. hit the applause sign on his ass. Look at him over there. What was ready. with that introduction? Did you write anything down? Dave, honestly, I didn't realize I was going to be your announcer. My bad. That's all oh, me. Oh, for shit's sake. This fucking Roy Harder. Let me tell you about him. On one of the goddamn most difficult episodes of the goddamn year, he tells me, good luck, I'm in Hawaii! Hang ten, Dave, man! Yeah! Applause that shit! Hang ten, aloha, Dave, man! I said, uh, thanks a lot for being there for me. Uh, no, Roy actually had, um, taken his, his, um... Uh, vacation uh, day a lot earlier, so we. But we're going to talk about uh, the great Fez Watley. I think that's all. How about some raucous em- enthusiasm and applause for that? Woo! God damn it, Fez was you're, the man. You're going to have to be applauding a lot Woo! tonight. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to. You you should have had a like some sort of like a special effects applause machine by you, Robert, because. Uh, no, those are your hands, Robert. Those, that's Robert. That's not a special effect as much as those were your hands visible on camera. Oh, I'm here an, he goes. I'm an I'm an old school fooly man, Dave. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Like I'll do the noises for you. Woo! Can you do them off camera? Let's see you do. Let's see you do one off camera. What do you want to hear? This is not going how I wanted it to. And I knew it was going to be crazy tonight. You know what, Robert? Just get back on the goddamn chair. Because we have a show to do. We have a a, a goddamn tribute to do. Saturday morning, I did receive the news from Ron uh, Bennington that Fez had passed away of the Ron and Fez show. Come on. Can we say one of the absolute greatest shows of all time? In my opinion, maybe the greatest show of all time. Could we say that? Could we be honest with ourselves and say that? Uh, yes, of course. Dave, I would say pound for pound, the greatest radio show ever. I would too. This is what I'm saying. But the undisputable thing is that it's one of the greatest. For, in my opinion, it's the greatest. Yeah. But it's certainly one of the greatest, right? We, we're, no one's going to dispute that. No one could. You're not going to you know, dispute that, Robert. You're not going to tell me to go fuck myself, right? Never. Robert, Never. Not tonight. Not tonight, Robert. Don't say Dave, man. Go fuck yourself. Go take that orange dick and put it in that brown asshole of yours. Right? You're not going to tell me to do that, are you? No, I wouldn't. You better not, you son of a bitch. It's a goddamn special episode. And here are you with all your goddamn antics talking about dicks and asses. And I can't even get through. Sorry, Dave, man. Now, Ronnie B let me know. And that it was, um, well, let's just be honest, okay? And I don't want to make this about me. But I'm going to tell you, for the last 16 months, the world has been, oh, one big catastrophic comet of shit. That's what I would say. That's how I would describe it. Um, You know, uh, in April, my dad died. And that's been weighing on me and still to this day quite heavily because due to COVID, we were not allowed to have a funeral or a wake for my dad and I never quite realized that funerals and wakes really are for the living not for the deceased as a result I don't have any closure with my dad's death and I want to kill people anger 
Today, Robert, you know what I was doing? I was buying a gigantic bag of ice at 7-Eleven for um, impending screwdrivers after tonight's difficult episode. And it was one of those huge, I mean, it, my hands go out of the frame. It was one of those big bags, 16 pounds of wow. something. And this little fucking dirt bag, you know, middle-aged guy, teeth missing. He was five foot one, drinking coffee at 7-Eleven like he's uh, fucking Norm from Cheers. This is his goddamn <laughs> spot. He thinks he could just hang out at 7-Eleven and comment on all the transactions all day. I bring my ice up, and this little fucking runt goes, that ice is going to melt by the time you get to your house. So... I'm so angry right now that I am now actually – Yeah, I would usually ignore little tiny you know, homeless trolls drinking coffee at 7-Eleven. But no, now I'm looking for an argument. I'm looking for a fight. So I turn to him and I go, Get him. well, actually, dude, I live 30 seconds from here. And he goes, it's still going to melt. I bet you it's going to melt. I go, how is it going to melt? <laughs> it's air conditioned in 7-Eleven. My car's running and it's air conditioned. I get out of my fucking car and I bring it into my house, which is air conditioning. How is it going to melt? I'm telling you, it's going to melt. At that point, I wanted to take the goddamn ice like a boulder and smash this fucking guy <laughs> right over and over. I'm very angry. My dad's death did not help things with the no funeral in the wake. Then on top of it, my son Stanley Max had, not to go too personal, but he's had an injury. Or so is going to require uh, surgery in uh, two weeks. That's going to be difficult, but you know he's a tough kid. Then my mom's got um, a health issue that we're keeping private, but that's something else. Then I got this. Then we got the lockdown, and then we got Fez. I am Fez might be the last uh, thing that puts me all over the edge. And if that little fucking guy is here tomorrow at Seven Eleven. I'm killing him with a bag of ice. And when that <laughs> happens, Robert, you're to blame. You, yes, you are to blame. Dave, man, now, who's been here for you this whole time? I don't know. Look no. around. It's you and me tonight, buddy. I'm the only Not one who showed bad. up. <laughs> No. Look at this. Me and you. <laughs> Dave, well, there were one set of footprints episode. in the stand. A special episode, and I have to fucking share it with a psychopath from Pennsylvania who emailed me randomly along with 30 other Sirius XM per or former Sirius XM person. He emailed, oh, yes, you did. Just you emailed you Sam. Sam. Just you emailed you Rod. Who else did you email? But nope. I was the only one who responded to you, you sack of shit. <laughs> it was just you and Sam, Dave, man. And obviously, Why would you uh, send an email to Sam? You know he would never respond to you. Because uh, I was desperate, and he yeah, seems well. to sick on de uh, desperate people, you know? All but right, all right. Not like you, who genuinely took me under your arm, baby. And what a mistake that was. And the fact that you it's just me and you tonight <laughs> makes me so sad. Depressed more than I am right now. <laughs> so, Fez, um, 57 years old. That is unbelievably sad i gotta tell you <sighs> i this might be rather childlike and or naive but i swear to god i really thought fez was going to be one of these people like live to 90 and even was doing something like i know he had retired from radio and stuff but i felt like you know take some time away then he comes back and then he's like a 90 year old like guy sassy <laughs> doing a podcast and it's like it's the fez fashion week okay <laughs> Look at what that bitch Lady Gaga's wearing tonight. She she go back to the steak or whatever the hell he would do. Um, so it's just very depressing. I guess where I tie in is that I worked for Ron and Fez for close for close to five years. Two thousand five, I was hired by Sirius X. Yeah, don't need to applaud my resume. Get those fucking fat hands away from each other while I'm giving you my resume stats. So I worked for Ron and Fez from 2005 to 2010, and they were some of the best years of my life. You know, I this applauding. How about we do a signal where I give you like a up like, like how about this? I just tell you applaud. <laughs> okay. Or I go hit that shit. Okay. How about that, Robert? Like hit that shit because the applauding. I'm just telling you like I what was 2005 to 2010, and um. 
I was I, I had met Ron and Fez years previous because I was a regular caller on the Ron and Fez show at WNAW in 102.7, and I loved it. Uh, what a show! And I'll call in oftentimes with com- with for comedy pyramids, like that stuff, like that comedy pyramids. I wasn't Mister, you know, Hard Rock Johnny. With all due respect, taking thirty five minutes, forty minutes of a show <laughs> with my little stupid phone call. Okay, I'm in and out. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with a goddamn good joke, and I'm out of there. You understand me? Um, so that was what I did. But Ron and Fez also used to have bar nine events. Well, I mean, it wasn't them having events. They were just cool enough that they said, hey, we're going to hang out at Bar 9 every other Tuesday during their WNEW run. They would hang out at Bar 9, which was a bar on 50, oh God, something, 55th and 9th, 56th and 9th, something like that. And we would go there. We would drink. We would get messed up. It would be awesome. Um, and we would, and, and, and there's Ron and Fez. Look at this. <laughs> and you can get the dog to Ron and Fez. And I swear to God, the first two or three times I met both Ron and Fez, I kept saying the same things. It was really embarrassing, actually. I would be, you know, Jack and Cokes and Guinness, and then I would, that would finally give me the courage to go up to Ron and Fez, and I'd be like, you guys are better than the Simpsons, man. You don't understand. Ron would be like, thank you, man. Thank you. No, you don't understand. You're better than Seinfeld, man. And I could see, and Fez would get uncomfortable. Thank you very much. Bet, no, you don't get it, man. You don't get it. You're like better than Saturday Night Live and everything. Everything. You're better. And, you know, eventually my girlfriend at the time, Westside, would walk me away from them. And that was a good idea on her behalf. So give her some credit there. Years later, I was in Westside. Surprising applause. I was so inspired by um, Ron Fez that I wanted to get into radio, you know, as, as, as well as WFAN in New York, sports radio. Those are my two big loves. And uh, I went, uh, so I went back to, to school. I had all these fucking credits, but because I was too much of basically a collegiate terrorist where I was lighting Christmas trees on fire, I was breaking $600 mirrors, I was <laughs> threatening the nuns at Fordham University. These were just a lot of bad things, really. So I, I, I was kicked out, but it didn't mean I failed classes. I had built all these credits. So I decided I'm going to go get these credits, but I'm going to go to a school where I could get into radio. And then from there, I got a little radio job. Then I got a bigger radio job. Then I got a job with the Rat of all places, where I currently am doing, uh, you know, Carl and Dave, the morning Rat Race, six to ten a.m. on ninety-five nine, the Rat in Jersey. But the point is, I had an opportunity. It was the weirdest fucking thing. Ron and Fez were having a Christmas party one night, and I wanted to go so goddamn bad, but I had to work. I worked Fridays and Saturday nights. At the rat. Well, guess what? One of the DJs, the midday DJ, Robin, she called out. So they said, Dave, man, you come in, fill in for Robin midday, <laughs> 10 to 2, baby. You don't have to work tonight. I go, fucking hey, This means I get to the Ron and Fez Christmas party. Now, here's where it gets weird, Robert. I want you to understand this. At the time, I was friendly with former Ron and Fez producer Rory, who was now Ooh, working for the Howard Wonderboy, Stern right? channel at Sirius. And I hate to say it, but due to the bar nine things and this and that, Rory and I had become, you know, friendly and he had gotten me a job at Howard, basically with Howard Stern. I simply had to go in, get do the interview and then boom, you're good to go. When do you start? Anyway. The reason why I bring that up is because that job, I was ready to go. Oh, my God. I get to work with the on the Howard Stern on Sirius. Uh, on Sirius. That's fantastic. But I go to the Christmas party, and that night they say, Harry Elvis, the producer at the time, along with Earl, is leaving, Dave, man. Maybe you should throw your hat in the ring. And I was thinking, I already have a job with the Howard Stern channel, but you know what? I fucking love to gamble. I love the round fans. I love the round fans and the gambling and the blackjack and the 21 and the round fans and the poker and the Texas hold'em and the round and fast. Anyway. I said, you know what? Fuck it. I love Ron and Fez. I mean, I'm Howard Stern, what a talent. Obviously the success, right? But the, the 
I loved running Fez. So even though I had a job with the Howard Stern people, I said, fuck it. I will. And I, they had me in. They had a few different producers, uh, you know, audition essentially. And people come in for a few days. I got lucky. I got. I went in for a few days and uh, I did well. I remember, though, after I did, was on the air and, had, you know, they had some good breaks, I, I was so wanting to do it that I said to Ron, I said, you know, Ron, I'll work for free. If you, if, if you. Well, that's more of a Robert thing to say. That's a, uh, it's desperate a good line, lunatic. isn't it, Dave? Yeah, that's that's the desperate lunatic that you that that you know fits you, Robert. Because again, I had a Howard Stern job, so why I'm telling Ron Bennington I'd work for free, but I guess I know why I wanted to work for free because I loved Ron and Fez. So I luckily somehow got the job. Fez was the one who really helped me. I, I mean, well, throughout throughout the entire show. But I, I'll never forget. I called Ron and I said, uh, or maybe just talked to Ron. And I said, you know, I want to get off to a good start. And I said, where, you know, any tips or any advice for you know getting off to a good start? Ron said, um, talk to Fez. Ron said, Fez is the best producer. I've ever had. I'll never forget him saying that. He said he's the best producer I've ever had. And when you think about that, because he's now a. If Ron Bennington's saying it, it means you're one of the best radio producers of all time, and then you're one of the best radio personalities of all yeah. time. Now that's that's Bo Jackson shit. Is everything okay there? Because the fact that it's me and you. I can see you checking your phone with your little fat fucking fingers. Everything's great, Dave. Was that Andrew? I was trying to make sure Andrew was ready. Yep, I forgot it was just you and me, though. It's kind of hard, my bad, buddy. You, oh, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. This is talk radio. All you say is, I love the Rod and Fest show, Dave, man. <laughs> we should do Rod and Fest stuff. I go, Robin, you never talk for, for fucking an hour straight. No. Well, welcome to fucking talk radio tonight, baby. Hell yeah. Me going nowhere. So Ron said, you know, Fez is the best producer I've ever had. You got to go with Fez. Uh, call Fez. And I talked to Fez, and yeah, he had amazing, amazing pieces of advice. I bought notebooks because he said to. I, I, was, I got all kinds of stuff. I took the notes. I did the shit. I did it all. But it, but it was all because, you know, Fez was the one who gave me the thing. As far as Going forward, when I became really part of the show, um, there was nobody like Fez at all. I mean, I said, by the way, I did warn people this is going to be all over the place. I'm not going to lie. I'm struggling, like, a lot these days. So my brain is sort of like Robert's. Schizophrenic <laughs> and not all there. And I have to rewind a little bit because I think it's only fair to say why I loved Ryan Fez so much. I started listening to them because I loved radio. But I got to tell you, I, I'm going to second Chris Pepper Stanley's thoughts because he said something yesterday, which was true, I felt. You got into Ron and Fez. Fez is because of Fez's voice. It pulled you in instantly and then you stayed because Ron was also a comedic genius and Fez was insane. And that, but think about that for a second. They both had insane, perfect parts where Fez is bringing you in with the voice and, and the thing. And then here's Ron keeping you, the more you listen, you're like, Jesus fucking Christ, this is fantastic. I mean, come on. But think about that. Wow, why did you start listening, Robert? I started listening on WAW because of Fez's voice. Yeah, uh, the flipping through serious channels, because you guys were on Raw Dog at the time. Uh, I heard Fez's voice and was like, what is that? And then you hear a couple of quirky lines from Ron, a couple of a couple of clapbacks from Fez. And then what really drew me in was like, Fez was this cool character who would go from being absolutely at the bottom of the hill, like getting all the shit piled onto him, to right. 10 minutes later just viciously attacking somebody and being the alpha of the alphas in the room and every yes. just could do it so seamlessly yes. it was amazing it was uh we, we we had a lot of fun and it was certainly intense 
And as I discussed uh, yesterday, I did. I was the reason why I'm saying yesterday. I was on the Bennington show. Ron, Gail, Pepper, uh, Earl, Vito did incredible job yesterday, and everyone who called in. I mean, I you know those things are always so tough. It's like I just want to listen to people. But then I feel like now I feel like I want to talk to them or at least I want <laughs> to hear their voices. So I called in. But um, and, and I was happy that I called in. But uh, listening to them, you know, they did such a great show. But I but Pepper brought up that point. I said that that's really true that you, you, you got into it. And the other thing that was brought up is that the works would evolve into <laughs> shoots. The wrestling of the Ron and Fez show was very real. Um, <laughs> basically, the Ron and Fez show was like HBK versus the, the, the Hitman. It was Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart with like five or six or seven of us at, at any moment. What I'm trying to say is that, okay, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, they're put together and this and that, but then they start actually, you know, <laughs> hate each other, but then they pull back. That happened to us a million times. I mean, almost too many to count. When you have people who are invested in doing what they're doing, they're going to go for it. And, you know, especially, you know, that's just the nature of the beast, and that's going to happen. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, everyone was friends. <clears throat> I've, I've discussed this before with Ron on Anthony's show, but I'm going to bring it up. One of the best performances of all time in the history of radio, if not television and film, is when Fez had his face slammed into pizza. <laughs> Dave, I Moi. think we have a clip of that if you want to go to it. I will. Let me just set up first. I forget what the bet was, but it was a bet. And we were going at it back and forth. Okay? Um, you know, now that he's passed, this stuff is fair game. Obviously, we worked it all out. <laughs> In no profession, including the wacky profession, which is radio... Can a host get assaulted by a producer <laughs> and the producer either not go to jail or at that very minimum get fired? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> at, like, think about what happened. Because believe it or not, there's conspiracy theorists that, that like even after I was on Anthony's show with Ron, we were talking about how we set up the pizza incident. People still like, they're just saying that. They're saying it to cut like for what reason? Why would, why would anyone lie about this? If you got worked over, don't feel bad. That was our intent intent. And it was saying and it's fine. That's that means that we did our jobs correctly. Don't be upset if you got worked over a little bit. It was entertaining as shit, wasn't it? But I will tell you yeah. on my mom's life, Beanie Mac and my children. Fez and I went over like a wrestling match. You're gonna do this and this and this, and then and then I'll come in and I'll shove your face in a pizza. This that you're gonna get mad. You're gonna cry. Blah blah blah. And we fucking hit it out to a T. Now let's hear a little bit of the infamous Piat the pizza incident. Hey, hey, Ron. Yeah. Uh, I just want to let Dave know, Fezzy and and you. Uh, what what would Dave be without uh, you guys? Uh, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> and um, I, I think he definitely needs to rethink where he's going Monday. And I hope it's not back on your show. All right, Dave and I <laughs> talked about this during the break a little bit, and he feels up. He's you feel bad about what happened, but again, uh, you know, Fez is Fez is Fez. Isn't we're not going to be able to change that. We've been trying to yeah. whatever for the last couple of years. He got upset when you pushed his. Uh, a thing and now uh, the people who saw him act like oh we we have to start a search party for him uh, Wait, when this, come running out of it, it... Robert pause that's not the pizza yeah I think that might have been the second clip we had pulled for that I think oh, there god two, damn it right? Robert you promised me all you the did time was code call me 1656 Dave, Garrett all right don't worry Robert same link 1656 Robert don't play with that microphone cord I see you be acting all weird you're like Rain Man now you're playing with the <laughs> microphone cord just relax I would like to we're also good. say that how good this today. I think man, we got it Fez now Fez Watley died we're not, we're, we're not going to be screaming but if you screw up one more time I'm gonna fucking kill you and your family I'm driving to Pennsylvania and I'm gonna burn down your whole goddamn house with <laughs> your fair. parents That's and fair. your dogs in it. Pizza right. as well. we know 
And, get the, yes. and that's from who? Who gave it to us? Frank. That's, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That's Frank. Excuse me. What? Is, what? What, is, what the hell do you think you're doing? I am having a slice of pizza. Absolutely from, not. From Frankus to. Mo, mo, uh, mainly uh, Jimmy Norton and S. Knight from Thanks, Frunkus too. Yeah, and, Thanks, boys. Uh, I'll put this fucking pizza over here. Slaves do not just grab pieces of pizza. <laughs> Slaves ask. Puts it right on my fucking hand. I know. You take it off. off. It's so rude. Right what on top you? of paperwork. Greasy fucking pizza. Right on top of paperwork. All right, may I please have a slice of pizza, no, master? No, no, because this was, you know, I, fine. It was Slave Week. Maybe it didn't go well. Sorry, maybe I'm stuck. Pause. Maybe slave it, Week. Pause. pause. So I guess the uh, I I think I kind of remember it might have been like Rutgers beating one of his uh, schools or something or Rutgers. Oh, Giants! It was Giants it was over the Bucks. Giants game. Yeah, it was a Giants over Bucks game. Giants yeah. over Bucks, and whoever lost the bet had to be the other one's slave. So Giants yeah. beat the Bucks. Fez had to be my slave for the week. <laughs> and earlier, Ronnie B was giving you a hard time that the bit wasn't going well. That's why you're kind of defending it here. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, all right. Stunk. Fine, but I'm going to ride Slave Week out. I'll play, I'll play, uh, you know, I'll pay off the bet. May I have a slice of pizza, Master, please? Because that's my favorite two boots one. If you eat it like a dog, that's the only way I'll do it. <laughs> if you eat, eat it like a dog, that's the only way I'll give it to you. Get on the fucking floor <laughs> with the pizza Why on, on the ground Robert? and eat it like a dog. <laughs> you asked Robert, for it. this is your idea. Why are you we playing this clip? And Who? I asked for it. I mean, no, right, I hear. thought it was a good idea. My bad. What's here? Dog. Don't Fine. Like I'll eat it like a dog then. Oh, my. I just want some pizza, and I am showing everyone that I'm paying off my bet. Well, I'm, I'm getting destroyed anyway. I'm going to make Slave Boy weak. I'm How are you getting out. destroyed? No, I mean, I'm... Uh, How Fred. are you getting destroyed? Because fucking Fred. Fred said his opinion? Fred's destroying me. Yeah. Destroy... The truth is, destro is the destroyer. Eat it like a dog, and that's it. Oh, Go I, ahead. I, I can't watch. I can't fuck him. Isn't that disgusting? Oh, it is disgusting. <laughs> That's what you get. All right, what the fuck oh. are you doing? <laughs> you fucking asshole piece of shit. What happened? I'm talking to fucking Fred. He just shoved my face. Ronnie just shoved my face in that fucking pizza. It's it's Slave Boy Week, right? <laughs> You're going to cry or something? Come You're on, a it's fucking Slave Boy Week. asshole. <laughs> You're it's a fucking maniac. It's Slave Boy Week. That's you what fucking have to haul it. This way, people fucking hate you. Why would you do that to me? I'm just trying to keep it going. I'm just trying to keep it happy, keep it fun. That's all. What's the big deal? I was keeping gotta... it fun. I was doing all your fucking poems. Come on. <laughs> I did. I was doing everything when the bell that's rang. That's all right. That's good. <laughs> Fez Wally. Now, from that incident, I got... Uh, Hate mail, my tires slashed in <laughs> Brooklyn, and death letters. Um, but it, it, interestingly enough, all these years later, recently, they found out that I, I was. Oh, is that me? Oh. You're back. You're back, baby. We got you. I'm back. Uh, yeah, Robert. We found out who the person was who threatened. But again, Fez and I, you know, we we worked on that, and he was amazed. He was at, yes, Robert. I was just going to say, I could see a lot of him rubbing off on you in that clip, because, like, a lot of the way he yelled at you is how you yell at me, like, pre-show sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. I'll learn from the best. Absolutely. You're, you know, you, you know, Fez Wally knew how to get things done when he would yell in a certain way. I, it's kind of sad. I've taken Fez's on air yelling because he didn't yell at people that much off the air. I, I'm being honest. I was underneath him. Fez was the boss, a boss, him and Ron, and me and Pepper and Earl and Pitsy and shit. He didn't yell at us off the air. On the air, for sure. But the, 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 the problem with me is I take it to the off the air thing. And I like to <clears throat> yell at you quite a bit and get upset at you. But is that true? No, you just want to bring out the best of me. And I think you do, okay. Dave. I get All right. it. I'm glad. That was a test. And I'm glad you passed it right there. Learning from the best. Now, the that was an example of when Fez and I um, were at odds. But we weren't always at odds. There's a couple of videos that we want to share where, of course, we were aligned. And the more I think about it, most times I feel like we were aligned. But then there would be... Literally, like the WWE, <laughs> there would be a four to five month period where we would have a rivalry. 
and there's no denying it. Um, but I can honestly tell you one thing that's 100% true. After the pizza moment, Fez and I were so excited that so many people bought it hook, line, sinker that we went out and celebrated with cocktails. And that's a <laughs> true fucking story. That's we awesome. were drinking when everyone's like, fuck, Dave. He pushed his Fez. <laughs> and he's like, you know, we did it. We did it. And I'm like, we fucking did it, baby. We did it because the they second- fucking won. Kill me. <laughs> um, the second clip I pulled there, we don't have to play it, but it's it's you crying, like Fez well, brought I, it I, out yeah, of you. I keep it on Fez. I, uh, no, me, no, me I know, crying. but like what like, I was gonna say is he helped bring out your tears, like that you guys were able to work that so well that it, people bought it hook, line, and sinker. He's like Jordan; he brought everybody's I performance to the next level. I would give all credit to the pizza. That pizza thing is Fez because yeah. he was the one who sold it by getting upset. That I pushed his face in the pizza. And when Fez got upset like that, I am telling you, I got death threats. And, <laughs> and, and, but, and I'm not saying that about me and woe is me and take pity on me. I'm saying it as a compliment to Fez. His performance got people so enraged at me that they were ready to the fuck get the pitchforks out. It was because of him, his selling. Um, but like I said, you weren't always... Um, we were, were not always uh, at odds. Most of the time, we were one team. I always looked at Ron Fez as a team. I just looked at it as a team that's like, see, I had a different outlook than maybe Earl or somebody. But I always looked at the Ron and Fez show as like the 78 Yankees. <laughs> the, Bronx, the Bronx Zoo. We're going to fight. We're going to go up. We're going to go down. It's going to be a goddamn roller coaster. The fucking manager is, might be drunk and might get fired <laughs> in the middle of the goddamn season. He might have to bring in somebody else. But we're going to get the job done. We're going to win the fucking World Series, and we're never going to give up. And I saw the Ron and Fez show like that. So even when we were at odds, I was never upset at all. I don't think Fez was most of the time either, but I won't speak for him. Let's see one of the videos where we're on the same team. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to see one maybe where you guys were hypnotized? Wasn't there one where we were running in somewhere or something? You said we had a couple of videos of running in somewhere. We have a... Dave and Fez barge in is the way I have it on the show prep. Yeah, so let's go to the Fez on the pole video, Garrett. This was an invasion you guys did at K-Rock together, right? Of Lopi and Anthony? Yes. Let's go, girls. Do you want to give the backstory here, Dave? I don't know the pause. Pause. You're going to have to help me. My brain is fucked. Yes. I okay, am okay, mentally yeah, yeah, yeah. struggling I, in I'm, real life. My bad. I, Dave has lost a little bit of sanity these days. I can't recall much. Okay, yeah, yeah. Happy to help, Dave. I just didn't want to steal your thunder, my man. It's the you know Eastside Dave show. You will. Give yourself two points, buddy. Thank you. Take them away. Take them away for, for, for gloating. Take three away. <laughs> Minus three for gloating. You know what? I deserve that, Dave. As soon as I said two points, oh, thank you. Thank you. I deserve Minus that. Minus three. I deserve Min- that. Minus one for saying you deserved it. Don't treat yourself like that. Have more self-confidence. Let's go. Let's go. Self-confidence. Oh, I'm the best. And I'm going to show you that by explaining. What happened here was you guys were in a fake radio war with Opie and Anthony. There was nothing fake about it. Hold on. Fake. We're in a radio war with Opie and Anthony. I, I think I think you guys were doing each other's bits and things like that, and it got to the point where Fez decided Well, to- it was a real radio war. We were friends, but we were highly competitive and wanted to outdo the other person. This was very much a war, Robert. Okay. Don't bring it fake into nothing. My apologies. My apologies. You, you know what? Minus five. You know what? Make it minus ten. You know what? Minus fifteen. Don't tell me how to fucking score my own goddamn game. <laughs> You're right, Dave. Yeah. So, Let's see this goddamn... So we're doing a fucking called, uh, uh, they, radio war with Opie and Anthony and they me called, and Fez. And they called Fez the that? hole. They called Fez the hole, and he said he would show them what a hole is and put them in their places, and this was his response <laughs> during their show. Oh, look at that. This is so unsanitary. Now it's COVID. You're like, oh, God. Oh, look at that, though. He got up high. Look at this. He does the twirl very well. That's not easy to do, Robbie. If you try to, I, I try to twirl, and I lose my grip, and I go flying. Oh, 
Oh, Shania Twain. That's why he's wearing the gloves, so he can't get the glove off. <laughs> glove is too tight, Robert. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> For the arm, though, <clears throat> that throw. And then the other one. That's a good toss. Two for two. That, 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 that's a good throw. He kind of looks silly, but it actually, it actually was good for me. Wow. Look at that! Uh-oh. What's oh, happening boy. now? This is a... No, no. <laughs> All right. Is that it, Robert? That's it, yeah. Okay. The other, um, the other great memory I have is you guys went in, uh, Jared, our friend, did a stunt on ONA, and they were calling him the greatest stunt man in radio. Oh, and then somebody, White Jared. White yes, Jared. White Jared. Still, still, yes. still a friend of mine, somehow. S- still a great friend. But still, you. Still so, well, hold on. Please don't put adjectives like great with Jared. Great friend. Little much. Little much. <laughs> He's a friend because he gives me marijuana that I pay him for. So we're not going to say that's a great friend. Ron okay. and Fez. Great, Great friends. friends. Gotcha. Jared, friend who gives you weed for money. Some or would call him a dealer. Drug dealer. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. There's another <laughs> word for that instead of friend. Um, but what you happened would, with White Jared? He did a who stunt. Who the hell was that? Wait a second. I just heard some coughing or something. Oh, look at this! And then, wait a second. I didn't even know. Big A, 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 big A. Ooh, do you like that new clapping wrinkle I added to the Big A song? Yeah, you're gonna have to teach me it, but that was sick. Gives a little punch, doesn't it, Andrew? Andrew Gold, Big A. Yes, Mr. Champion. You're Skyping in. I heard you were sick. So I was like, Jesus Christ, Roy's not there. No Andrew. I got, uh, I put a thing out to Sean. Oh, he didn't get back to me. Who was there for you, though, Davey? Andrew Gold, big A, big A, big A, big A, big A. It's bum, 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 bum. One, one, two, three, four. It's four. It's Ba, 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 okay? No, yeah. no, no. Ba, 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 ba. Let's go. Eh. Ba, 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 ba. Come on. Ba, 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 ba. I'm better. Horrible, Robert. Andrew, very good. Andrew, five points. Dollar. Robert, minus nine. <laughs> Andrew, how yes, are you doing today? How are you doing with all of this, by the way? Because this is not fun in any way, shape, or form. What a horrible uh, few oh. days, huh? Yeah, it's been uh, quite rough. Um, and uh, you used to have some uh, rivalries with uh, Fez, and they were oh, legendary. Oh, hi, Fez. Oh, oh hi, Fez. Fez. And, and then what, what I what what I seem to recall is not only would you take some verbal shots at Fez, but for yes. some reason, one of the things, one of the topics that you like to hone in on was the size of Fez's nipples. You used to refer to them <laughs> yes. as, uh, like, you know, saucers for a teacup. Yeah, yes. I, saucers, yeah. yes. Yeah, saucers. Yes. Why did you, uh, look, why were you so obsessed with Fez's nipple size? What was that all about? <laughs> I don't know, I think you have to ask my writer. <laughs> <laughs> That is where Andrew Gold and I started, uh, formed a partnership that is very much like Lennon and McCartney. And uh, neither of us are John Lennon or Paul McCartney. So really, uh, I should have used a different analogy. But, um, yeah, that was, that, was, that was a lot of fun. We, yes, I don't was. know why, but, yeah, that was another uh, one of Fez's rivals for a little bit. But this was a fun rivalry. It was Fez's oh, rivalry yeah. with Andrew, and then we'd write you little things. Do you remember any of the lines besides the um, – Large nipples that you seem to concentrate on? You remember uh, that shit or no? Mostly, it was about to come. It was about <laughs> come? Come, yes, most, yes. 
And what was said about Cub, Andrew? I mean, just give me a roundabout, because now I'm curious. Oh, man. It was a long time ago. It's been a long time. That you can remember ago. that it was about Cub, but you can't <laughs> remember long. exactly what it was about Cub. <laughs> True. Well, it was about Cub. You said a lot of things about Cub. Like, I don't know. You'd think if you remembered the cum part, you'd remember the other details. Robert, would you, I could see you have your little thumb up. What? Uh, nothing. I would think oh, Andrew. I, thought, I, thought. I would think Andrew would remember more of the details too, Dave. Maybe we could even play a clip, <laughs> potentially jog his memory, see if anything comes back. Let's do that, Robert. All right, Andrew, yeah, when to go get to the a third clip, downloaded buddy? clip? That's that's called producing. Andrew, go. Prepare comes with a clip. He's like a movie star that goes on Johnny Carson. Remember back in the old days, the movie star Johnny. I brought a clip. Here you go, Johnny. Here's a fucking clip for uh, fucking Smokey and the Bandit too. Johnny, let's go. I think it's I the hip. This. It's the hypnosis, Garrett. Should be the third one. Yeah. I want every Three single. Oh. Oh, it's that rider. That's. All right, it's time to. Uh, we've got Paulo here. It's time to do uh, movie reviews. Hello, Paul. Well, you know, Oscar season coming up. It's, uh, <laughs> we're just days away from the nomination. Oz, yes, it is. Oz. <laughs> so Don the Hypnotist has Fez and I, oh, I mean, excuse me, my, one of my nemesis, the Midnight Rider, uh, Don, the, Don the Hypnotist has Fez and the Midnight Rider under hypnosis. And now he's t telling Fez he's Paul O, this film critic from Florida. He used to call the Rod Fez show all the time. All right, let's go. We're just days away from the nomination. Yes, it is. So I just, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Get I, out I'm your just, phone already, Paul. <laughs> you know, Gail. <laughs> I, I just, oh, I'm Paul's <laughs> wife, Gail O. Uh, yeah, Paul O had a crazy wife named Gail. By the way, you want to talk about a legendary thing? I would tell Ron, one of my favorite things at ever was being uh, the producer for Ron and Fez when Paulo and Gail O came up from Florida <laughs> and came to the 57th Street studio in New York. And I was like, holy shit, like this is incredible. And Ron, I think, had told me, I'm not sure if uh, he said, I thought he said he had never even met Gail <laughs> that they had met Paul. But Gail O was just, was Paulo's wife who you would never, like, really... Well, we never saw, because it's the goddamn radio. Okay, you yeah, know, smart yeah, yeah. But she was always screaming at Paul, you know? <laughs> Get off the phone! You know, she's always screaming at him. Those were some of my favorite bits of all time. <laughs> I don't know why! I loved hearing this guy, this film critic, wanting to give his little review out, and the wife is fucking tearing him to pieces. It just, I loved it. All right, go didn't, ahead, please. Didn't Earl end up hooking up with her, Dave? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> No, Gail O passed away as well. Oh, I thought I thought that was the mental patient that Earl ended up with. Or was that a different one of Paulo's flings? No, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't think that was the same mental patient. But there's a lot of <laughs> mental patients in the Ron Fez universe. Yeah. I'm one of them. Um, all right. Let's oh, hear I the... Enough, uh, enough. God. These guys use you. It's Oscars. <laughs> just one time a year, Gail. I just the guys. The guys think I'm... about movies, Paul. I have my uterus <laughs> infection. You know, you're so detrimental <laughs> to everything I try to do. I've you're... been in the hospital. I understand, Melly, but uh, she doesn't know how Where sick she is. Wait a second, She doesn't Paul. know. Is this your new shrew? This is... Who's the... made an appearance in talk? Oh, at home, Paul! That's Where's the medicine the talking. Going? That's the medicine game. Well, we, we have Regis who's sick <laughs> on his bed. And you I have beg to bring you. I beg you. Weekend shrew, Paul. Gail, Gail. Gail. I beg you to take the right, dog right, to right, the right. bed. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Enough. That's another one. Good. That was good. That was good. Andrew, did you like that? Andrew, did you want to say anything? Um, I mean, we're, we're playing some clips. We're doing some audio. We're telling some stories. Did you have anything you wanted to, to say? I mean, like a story-wise or anything while we before we continue? Because I got to show beard porn. I mean, Robert, we got to show beard porn. We have to show beard porn. <clears throat> so, Andrew, would you like to – do you have any anecdotes before we continue? I'm not putting you on the spot. You don't have to right, right, right. share anything. I just I, – I wasn't sure. Would that be a yes? You have an yes. anecdote? Or, okay. Yes. Um, you can tell it now if you'd like. 
Thank you, Mr. Champion. You're welcome, Andrew. Like I said on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, uh, a lot of times I kind of didn't want to um, either uh, say or do something uh, uh, to Fez. And, and I, you know, the time didn't have any cameras or, or you know, any cameras or video. And um, he used to be like, oh, oh, just do it, you know, you know, go ahead. I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be like, going, oh, like this, and he's like, no, 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 you know. I mean, like he always encouraged me. Yeah, he was very encouraging. Like, of course, he yeah. was, he was always going. He was always go for it. So he wanted right. everyone else to go for it. But yeah, know, that was the only way it would make sense. So oh, yeah, it, was, it was always great advice. Yeah, there was there was. I was one of the rare people who Fez had to tell said, "Don't go for it," at the <laughs> wedding. So this was awesome. We did on the Ron and Fez show. This couple wanted to get married on the Ron and Fez show, and so they go, uh, "We want to get married, but we, you know," and and they just emailed to us, and we we're like, "Well, what should we do with them? How should we do this?" So we we thought the world's fastest wedding, right? And we thought they'll do everything associated with the wedding, not just the wedding itself, right. but the guy will propose. Then it'll be a bachelor party, a bachelorette party, the <laughs> wedding itself, the reception, and it'll be all in one hour. And, and they actually, we actually did it in the fishbowl, the main you That's know awesome. thing where you could get an audience and shit at Sirius XM. Because of that, um, so for the bachelorette party, I came out like a uh, a cop, I believe. And <laughs> bachelor bachelor party, Fez came out dressed like a woman for <laughs> for the man. <laughs> and we both had to give lap dances. I had to give a lap dance to the lady. Fez had to give a lap dance to the man. Right. Fez told me, Dave, no matter what you do, do not take your pants off and show out <laughs> and show your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I love radio for the fact that a boss has to tell his underling, and this is a serious statement now, because that would be something I might do, but it was the fishbowl, whereas, you know, in the Opie and Anthony, Ron and Fez studios, you know, you, there, it's protected. There's a curtain there. You could be shielded right, from right, the right, goddamn right. society, from the police, if you had to. Oh, yeah. But in the fishbowl, there's no way. So he was very nervous. He said, "Don't please don't take out your pants and pull out your dick." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest thing to me ever because I just was like, "God, this is the best job in the world." But you know, the the only thing I I can do wrong is if I pull out my dick. Like in the this bar studio, is so low for me. <laughs> <laughs> as long as Dave doesn't take his dick out of the fishbowl, he's had a good show. I'm like, yeah, baby, it's it's the fuck. Low bar theory. The Dave man's bar was set at about four inches. As long as I don't fuck it up tr tremendously and drive a bus into it, we'll be fine. <laughs> right, Andrew? You like yes, me, don't you? Mr. Champion. Yes, Mr. Champion. You you know right. what I'm saying. But Fez was oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. But Fez was like that too. And when he went for the bachelorette uh, or the bachelor party lap dance, I mean, my God, he was doing. Well, you saw him on the stripper pole. I mean, he was doing moves that were better. He was doing better band dance moves than most exotic dancers. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Robert, you said, that, was there uh, another? Oh, beard porn? We could do beard porn, yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> the beard porn was the, uh, there was another bet, I guess. Now, my memory is a little hazy about this one. <laughs> but I have put this in the vault. Now, listen, since... Two Mondays ago, and boy, let's just go on a, a side for a second. That was fucking weird. Two, like, not two Mondays ago. What am I talking about? Last Monday, I did the Bennington show um, for Chris Pepper Stanley's birthday. Yeah. And the whole point of the show, I mean, by God, it's eerie. I was like, you know, we should be friends and stop being such a dick and reply and Earl the same thing. And in that show, I'm like, you, you don't know if you're all going to be around together i mean that was wow that was august 10th 
And, yeah. and, and I mean, very peculiar, August 9th, August 9th, Monday, but still very strange that just a few days later, and that really was, is my motivation. You know, I don't look back on things with bitterness. I look back on things with the rose tinted uh, glasses and shit. And I'm like, it doesn't matter if we went hard at it. If we were fucking at each other's throats, we're done with that now. Let's be friends because we were we were having a blast and making fucking radio gold, baby. That's what we were doing. We were entertaining the masses. I, I'm not talking about feds. I'm talking about like an Earl or not replying to me, a Chris Daly. And that's the only reason why I wanted to do that is so that we could all be a thing. You never – well, I was, I was going to say you never know when something could happen. But then this happened, and it's, it's ugh, awful. But in any event, with this beard porn video, I seem to remember not being involved in it. I remember this being a fez pepper bit and what happened pepper lost and backed out or there was some <laughs> shenanigan reason oh i swear to god now someone's gonna have to do the research someone's gonna have to you know listen and, and do do their own thing but i'm pretty sure that pepper uh, backed out of this and i got put into beard porn but you know what that was heaven for me baby okay Davy Mac rises to the occasion. In more ways than one, Robert. I'm not saying Fez smelled good <laughs> and caused a little reaction to little David. <laughs> the friendy. My dick. But you're friendy. not not saying that. I'm not saying that. Because there was a warmth. I mean, like, simply body temperature-wise. Warmth combined with a nice, sweet smell. And there may have been a little action. On Lil David. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, here, here, here you go. Again, we don't necessarily have to play all two minutes of this. But I do want to point out one thing. At around the 122 mark, I turned my head to the left. So maybe started at like 50 seconds. I turned my head to the left and you can't see my face because I'm actually laughing so hard at what Fez is doing. He is literally right on top of me. And we are practically making out and fucking. <laughs> that, this is the part. Why is he going on my ear? That's why I started laughing. And now, when we actually get the chin whiskers, we will post the kissing right there. That is the <laughs> Kissing and now I'm laughing, and that's why the head turns over there. And if you see my shoulders pop up and down, it's because I am actually laughing. And the head put a song yeah, right there. I'm laughing. I can't. Oh, no. Look at this. Look at this. Okay, I can't. Please, please, get the truth. Please don't. The, uh, <laughs> you gotta understand, we were doing that at like fucking three thirty in the afternoon in a corporate setting. <laughs> the only thing that's preventing like us from getting thrown in jail is because they had curtains at the serious studios. Yeah. When you have two grown men in tiny whiteies <laughs> rubbing beards on each other, and it was like three thirty in the afternoon, Andrew. So hot. So hot. <laughs> yeah. So Look hot. at you. Robert, was that romantic? Was that sexy in any way? We're both men. I know you're, you know. I, you like it, wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me, Dave. You're going to say that to me on a goddamn fucking Fez tribute show? It wasn't oh Fez's fault. God. It you're wasn't Fez's fault. Me. What the Fez? How could I have looked any sexier? All right, Jimmy Fallon, why don't you break a little more? Right? I turned my head to the side so my face was not in view of the camera. Also, yeah. this was not a live sketch. This was filmed. The cinematographer had every opportunity to edit that out. So don't blame my ass. Blame the cinematographer, who's probably Chris fucking Pepper Stanley anyway. <laughs> Do you guys Andrew, remember when you sang Brokeback Mountain songs to each other? 
I have no memory of this. You don't? You want to play the clip? Yes. You sing one of the big yes. heartbreaking kind of yes, I did. show stopping mm. numbers. Would you sing a little bit of that for us sure, tonight? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I'm on a mountain and the sun is going down. And I've got my feet on the ground. I'm going down too. But not like the sun. I'm going down on my partner. <laughs> that didn't wow. even rock. Pretty good. Uh, Fez, you also have one of the big uh, songs. By the yeah. way, uh, Dave, th that was really. really Thank close. you. I was. <laughs> yeah. And what is your song, uh, Fez? Mine is one of. It's, at, it's right after. Um, uh, Jack and Ennis meet, and it's uh, Jack and Ennis. Yeah, that's the character's <laughs> name. Exactly. No one and else knew that. It's a it's a big <laughs> number that uh, comes right as they're you know they've they've met, they've become friends, the bond is growing, and they're ranching in Wyoming. And something seems to be there between them, and yeah, the they, song it, tells that story. Exactly. It's like they don't understand exactly <laughs> what's happening between them yet. Okay. All right. Let's uh, hear a little bit of that. Why, Wyoming? Why, Wyoming? <laughs> I'm out here, and I'm roaming, and I'm touching, and I'm kissing. Why? Why, Wyoming? What did you do to me? You're a ranch state. It's cattle. It's sheep. It's cows. What did you do to me, Wyoming? What did you do to me? I ask why, why, Wyoming? Oh. Wow. Very, very nice. Oh, my God. Uh, was that a hypnotist, though? Uh, it may have been, yeah. <laughs> it may have been. Thank you. Thank you, clip guy, producer. You're the one who's supposed to know what the fucking context of these things. The context was, I believe you were hypnotized, and it was the movie was <laughs> Brokeback Mountain. You were singing to each other. I just told you that. <laughs> Because there's no way Fez and I are doing a broke back musical <laughs> randomly like, in that spot. It didn't sound normal for Ron to be like, "Hey, do a musical about broke back." <laughs> um, um, what else? I know that. How you about know, when he took you out for martinis? After right, so, after. Well, I, I I didn't want to repeat the stories I said on Bennington, but. So I want you to check out that show. I you know check out the Bennington show on Monday. Uh, August 16th. But I guess I can quickly say that I'd broken up with uh, Westside, the girlfriend at the time, and Fez took me and Pitsy out for martinis and to dispense relationship advice <laughs> to me. <laughs> and I have to tell you, it helped. <laughs> I got liquored up. I listened to him. And I felt better about myself. And it was very rudimentary advice, but sometimes, like, that's why they give it to you. That's why they put those little phrases and fortune cookies and shit. And he was just like, don't even worry about it. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Yeah, she, she doesn't even know it. She's messing. He even brought a little sass, like, it was as if it was her fault, by the way. And it clearly was. She was going out with a maniac like myself, who could have been, you know, any worse. But, um... He put it on her. He was like, she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know. I was like, this is fantastic. So that was the martini bar, the bar story. But the other thing that I want to say is I've slept over Fez's house in Roosevelt Island twice. Once to watch the movie Frailty with Bill Paxton. Uh, did you ever see that movie, Robert? No. So should I, tomorrow night, you doing anything? <laughs> you will never be invited to my house. The way I was to Fez's. Unless I moved to Roosevelt Island. Fair enough. And that's a possibility. Because I feel like after these last 16 months with my dad's death, with my mom, with my son, with the pandemic, with the COVID, and now with Fez, I feel like an island might be good for me. Yeah. I feel like an island where with, with, with none of you motherfuckers around, and I just want to walk to the store, buy a ginger ale, and walk back to my apartment. Like, that's all I want to do. And not and just be left alone. Uh, so that, there's a possibility about that. But I, I, uh, we watched Frailty with Bill Paxton, and I'll never forget the size of the bowls. He had bowls of popcorn, I mean, bigger than Andrew's fucking head. 
these bowls were like <laughs> the, they were like uh, you know fucking like they were like vats. They were more vats than bowls. They were big, huge vats of popcorn. No two people could have eaten that much popcorn. <laughs> but God damn it, we tried. <laughs> and then the other thing that we had, which I loved, was the White Castle Challenge. They gave us 30 White Castle hamburgers. And they put them between me and Fez. And they said, whoever eats more wins the contest. <laughs> and we fucking went to town on those things. And I got to tell you, we both should be proud. I did win. However, it was 16 to 14. I mean, I literally wow. had to grab that last fucking burger. Otherwise, it was 16 to 14 Fez's way. And it was amazing. He had 14 goddamn White Castles. I had 16. I had never gotten the looks on the bus on the ride home from that like I did from that day. Because it was the worst farting. It was Andrew Gold farts. What the? What the? You know, don't <laughs> pretend you don't. Farted okay, in Drew's yes. face last week. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is all about Fez. Otherwise, we'd be showing that clip for the next 13 weeks. Farting in Drew's face. You think Fez would be proud of that? Do you? Do you? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably would. He probably would uh, get a kick out of you farting oh, in Drew's yeah. face. You're probably right about that. <laughs> What else, Robert? Here's a question I had for you, Dave. If if I know a lot of people got a lot out of Ron and Fez. Um, I've been talking to some of the fans who say, you know, even to this day, like even after the show was over, they'll go back if they're having a bad day and listen to old clips, and it's really a bright well, spot but, for them. I, it's amazing that the show has had such a life on YouTube. I yeah, know it, that a lot of people yeah. watch it or listen to it on YouTube, and that was w really one of the main reasons why I wanted to move all of my shit the Davy Max Sports Program, the Watchers, the Eastside Dave and Son Wrestling Show over to YouTube because I realized, A, I mean, I, I don't even want to say this because Fez passed away, but I did think if I die, there yeah. goes all my all podcasts content. because yeah. I can't pay the podcasting service right. anymore. But now that they're on YouTube, boom. And Forever. it's the same thing with Ron Fez where they, you're on YouTube, now you're going to stay there. Yeah, so, absolutely. But my, my question is, if these guys had to do something or want to do something to pay tribute to Fez, like, you know, should they go eat 30 sliders? Do you have any idea of something they can do? Which guys? Who? The fans who are hurting. Like, if they want to do something to, like, pay tribute, you know, like, put a candle in the window or something. What would you say would be a good way to honor him? Put a candle in the window? It's this he's it's not fucking it's not Princess Die in a car crash. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? To I don't know. Is there a way you would think Put that the Put a candle fans in the window as if Fez went off the goddamn war, Andrew. <laughs> Fez, Fez is getting back from Berlin, Andrew. He defeated the Scheiser. Yes, Mr. Champion. I would say if you want to uh, um, do something to honor Fez, I mean, uh, well, let's see. He liked... Um, was it Sweethearts or was it, what are those other ones? Smarties? I think he liked Smarties. Smarties, okay. <laughs> he liked one of those candies that I think it was, I think it was Smarties, not Sweethearts, the more I think about it. Um, that's one thing. Batman was a favorite, you know, he liked that, of course, of the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and of course the wrestling. Um, but, yeah. or you just buy a goddamn Fez. <laughs> and wear a fucking Fez around. Yeah, there really funny. probably is no better tribute than actually simply buying a Fez. In fact, I'm going to be doing that myself. Nice. Okay, I'm getting a Fez. I have decided right fucking now. You want to do it? Uh, come on in with me and that will be how we pay tribute to Fez. I'm going to smoke weed tonight and I'm definitely ordering a Fez very, very shortly. Um, all right, well, is that any more clips? Um, I we know did, we're, we're late. That's we okay. It's a tribute past. show. Um, what? I said it's okay. It's a tribute show. We had beer porn we did. Uh, the only other one we had was Fez in a Coffin. Now I don't want to do that. Cool. Then I would say call it a show. You okay. played a beautiful um, tribute to your friend. It's only because that's upsetting to me to think about. Um, but what I was going to say is... Um, if people feel like hearing you discuss this more, is there anywhere like you'll be tomorrow, perhaps, 
like a show you'll be on or anything? I'll be on Chad Dukes. Is that what you want me to promote the fucking uh, my appearance? Is check that out, what you're, you're trying out. to do? You're trying to act like a producer at the last second, and you, you, you're, you're trying to take all the heat away from you because Andrew he came in like a producer. He set up his own goddamn movie clip like he was fucking Burt Reynolds in 1979 already. Yeah, whoever did that was fucking fantastic, Dave. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't let Andrew have it. You couldn't let Andrew have a little piece of gold. He was one of Fez's favorites. He was. I know for a fact he would have hated you. That hurts, Dave. You okay? Fine, yo, I take that back. But I will say this, Robert. There's something fast, Freddy, about you. And after you're done with this show, if you want to hear, I mean. I think it would be best to stick with the Ric Flair stuff and stick with the happy stuff and the Fezzatorials. I mean, the Fezzatorials were brilliant. So were the Ric Flair stuff. I used to love those. But St. Patrick's, Fez and I were drinking really heavily. And I, I did the Big A gimmick with I started to write this little intern, Fast Freddy, and he kind of looks exactly like you, Robert, and he also was from Pennsylvania, and I gave Fast Freddy little notes to write. To, and, mm-hmm. like, no, I mean, like, little things to say to Fez. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I I mean, just bad things, okay? Well, I'm not, <laughs> now I feel guilty. And Fez <laughs> went off on Fast Freddy, and I, I believe he threatened, he, he, he was threatening him to, to, to harm him at one point. <laughs> it, I'm laughing, talking about it. You're, you're like, um, why is he smiling when he's talking about that? I'm like, it's one of those things, yeah, you have to experience uh, either there or on YouTube to get the full scope of it. Obviously, talking about it doesn't do it justice, but that's a great moment. or That's a crazy moment. How about that? But what I was going to say is that the um, you know there's a lot of professional wrestlers who call themselves a Paul Heyman guy. I don't know if you guys know about this, but Paul Heyman, he was Paulie Dangerously, the manager, but then he went, you know, he became, Paul Heyman is his real name, and he created ECW, and then he went to uh, go to WWE as an announcer, and then as a um, <clears throat> writer for SmackDown, he he was the head writer, wrote the show, and then uh, has become a brilliant manager for Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, but everyone, since CM Punk said it, because CM Punk and Heyman had a relationship CM Punk said, I'm a Paul Heyman guy, right? And I I, I was loved when uh, those guys said that, you know, and I think that's really cool. Well, I, I, I've thought about this a lot, and I got no shame in my game saying I'm a Ron and Fez guy, uh, and I'm goddamn proud of it. Now is when you, your fucking meat sticks should be applauding. Because what... Ron and Fez did was open up a world of radio that no one had ever heard before. And, you know, it, it, it changed so many people for the better. I mean, I certainly have gotten more and, you know, more radio opportunities and things like that due to Ron and Fez for sure. But I, when I was there, I wasn't necessarily looking for other stuff. I was just be, relishing being on the Ron and Fez show. And, you know, you look at the all the success of, uh, you know, Earl Douglas with the Black Rock Coalition and um, <laughs> Chris Pepper Stanley. <clears throat> oh. Well, Andrew Gold is here. I mean, I mean he is the producer of the Side Dave Show. And he started as just a character on the Ron and Fez show. And now yep. look at him. He's a producer. He is the remote producer, and Robert's the in-studio producer. Just yep. so we don't have it, you know, I know you guys take your producer shit. Seriously. And there's very much a Dave Earl dynamic here as far as the workload, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, Andrew, you're doing all the work per usual? Um, so, but what, what I, but I, I mean that, you know. I've been lucky enough to have stayed in contact with Ron, and I get furious when Pepper and Earl wouldn't reply to me. After Fez's latest health issue in March, I believe it was, or February, I forget, one of those months, um, I did text him, and he got back to me, and we had some nice conversations about AEW, the alternate wrestling league, and Darby Allen. He's a big Darby Allen fan. Um, so that was really fun, and that was fantastic. But uh, all in all, it's the greatest radio show of all time. And to lose Fez is just, it's just, 
it's horrible. It's it's just killing me. But like we said, we have uh, all these shows on YouTube. If you're not a SiriusXM subscriber, can you get Ron and Fez on SiriusXM on demand? No. Why would they not make that available? There might be a couple of specials, but I don't think you can get full library anymore. Why? Okay. Um, so then definitely go to YouTube. I was trying to be nice. And yeah, promote- yeah, yeah. No, I, I but- definitely go to YouTube. Um, <laughs> lots of- What's that all about? You know, for, uh, we, we can't keep the betting or, uh, you know, like, why? Why would they do that? Uh, it's, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a, just a tragedy, Dave. On to be right, completely it's, honest, they, but it is them doing that. You know, XM, especially if you're a serious XM subscriber, you should be like, "Hey, man, I pay for this. I should pay, get everything. I should get the live stuff. I should get the end of all stuff." Anyway, I'm not gonna dwell on it. Go to YouTube and dis- and discover and rediscover the Run and Fez show. It had so many great errors too. Oops. WNAW in in New York, JFK in DC, the XM Oops. days. The ninety-two-three free FM days, and then the serious XM days. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 really incredible, um, and we're gonna miss Fez a ton. I'm I, I've been honest. I, I'm I'm in denial a little bit, and have been in denial, and that's the way I usually roll when someone like you know very important to me passes away. I'm numb for a while, and I'm in denial, and then a month later, I'll be driving. On my way to 7-Eleven to get ice. <laughs> when I'll just start crying like it's the REM Everybody Hurts video in my car. And I'm just sobbing and like, what's wrong with me? Oh, yeah. Now I know. Um, so that probably is in store for me. Let's see. It's August 17th. September 17th, Robert. Expect a meltdown of epic proportions. I'll be okay. there if you want to call, Dave, man. Be ready. Um, but we, we're going to miss Fez tremendously. I, th- I thought he was going to live forever. I thought he was going to live till he was 90. So it's just heartbreaking. I could even envision, you know, Roy Roy showed a picture of him and Fez on wow. Roy's Instagram. If we could grab that real quick, that was a very cool shot because I had forgotten about that. Yeah. It was when um, I was still there. We were doing Davy Mac Sports Program XL. I was doing it with Pepper. And then on nights where Pepper wasn't there, Roy <laughs> would come in and do the keyboards and everything. That's awesome. It was fantastic. And so I invited Roy to the Christmas party, and it was and, and Roy uh, met Fez. <laughs> was he a fan before he Let's met you, Dave? Picture. What's that? Was he a fan before he met you? Who, Roy? Yeah. Did he no, come? No, he did not. No, know okay, Roy I didn't know that. On his own planet, he learned about them from Sean O. <laughs> no, Sean O. Sean O is the guy. Yeah. yeah okay. Sean okay. O is the Ron and Fez to Davy Max Sports Program connection for sure. Yeah. Well, rather than myself, <laughs> obviously and, 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 you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we're a couple good connections as well. But Sean O was a big fan. It's, it's Roy Harder on Instagram. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look. Wow. There's Roy, and that's Chris Stanley behind them, swilling down Heineken's. <laughs> uh, there's Roy, not a drinker, so I, I don't know what was in that glass, probably water, and there he is with Fez. Man, talk about two guys who we should have definitely gotten to collaborate. We could have had Roy do a new version of It Makes You Fez. You know, oh it my makes God. you Fez. <laughs> it makes you Fez. <laughs> um, man, we should have had that done. That would have been awesome. Yes. That's why. That's why you gotta you gotta reach out to people while they're still still around. And if and if look, long story short, there's no lessons here. But reach out to people while they're still around every once in a while. And if the person reaches out to you, get back to them <laughs> every once in a while. Because yes. you know these last sixteen months, I can't I can't deal with much more with it. So we're gonna miss Fez a lot. We uh, we did have one to caller. For Dave. an hour forty five minutes. We did or, have I mean, an hour fifteen minutes. Yeah, we did have one caller who had a Fez memory. Do you want to take it, or we can end it here? It's up to you. I put him on the line. Who is it first? It's Bradley. Garrett, get 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 ready to fucking hit the you know hang up button. I think he's a good egg, Dave. Put up. Put up. <laughs> Bradley. Bradley. Hang up. Bradley? Hey, Davey. Hi, Bradley. I hope you do uh, better than you sound. <laughs> and I'll try and make this quick. My uh, Fez memory is when he was behind uh, 
uh, what was it? Uh, the drummer fucking uh, shit. He was smacking his stomach. Andrew uh, WK. CWK, yes. Fuck. Why the the drumathon Andrew drinking. WK was doing, Dave, and they sent Fez behind. Is that your memory, Bradley? Yeah, that's it. Wasn't he smacking his tummy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you, Bradley. All right, well, thank you, Bradley, and Bradley, thank Robert for being a trans for being a drunk translator tonight. <laughs> Bradley, thank you very much for contributing your call. Now, I, I never saw that. Is there a video of that? I think on the belly. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right, sure does that. Oh, hi, kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I've never seen this. <laughs> this is we crazy. should be saying the belly drumming. Oh, all right, the other drummer, the guy I call other drummer, yeah. is <laughs> taping me. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> But I really think that they're doing this on purpose because they've kept the camera. <laughs> <laughs> to me, if I'm watching, I'm like, I'm having the time of my life. I don't have to know this fucking guy. Oh my god, did a belly drumming and yeah. second. I, I wish Andrew WK would give us some notice so I could get a little bit better drumming okay. shape. Uh, Here we go. Oh, guys. All right, thank yeah. you. That's fantastic. Holy mackerel. I uh, well, all right, that'll do it. Um, so, in summation, everyone's gonna miss Fez tremendously. Yes. I don't know what else to say except that um, I love Fez, I love Ron, I love the all Me those too. guys and girls, and I will say this: I said it before, and I'm gonna go out on it. I'm a Ron and Fez guy. And I'm proud of him. That's it for me. We'll see you next Tuesday. Check out Dave on the Chad Duke Show. No need to worry, because I ain't in no hurry. Damn, it's been a real fine day. There's a whole lot of trouble out in this world. Yes, a whole lot of worry. Damn, it's been a real fight.